Hi, my name is Dan Nigro, Product Marketing Manager for Control Components at Omron Automation and Safety. Today's video, we're going to focus on the basic setup of our multi-function counter, the H7CX-N series. Before we begin programming the H7CXN multi-function counter, let's review some of the key features that it has to offer. First, the easy to read process value display. If you have the four digit model, the process value will be 12 millimeters high. If you have the six digit model, the process value will be 10 millimeters high. As far as programming the unit, very easy to program, can be programmed through the front panel as we will do today. A nice feature that the H7CX-N has to offer that many of our competitors don't offer is a tricolor display. And it is programmable and it will let you program the counter to display a certain color, that color being red, green, or orange, to show the current status of the counter. Next, a universal input. Our H7 CXN counter will accept an MPN or a PMP input. From an output perspective, depending on the part number, we do offer a contact output and or a transistor output. Seeing how the H7CX-N is mounted on the front of an electrical panel, we do offer key protection. Here, we offer seven different levels. So therefore, depending on your application, it will allow you to protect the counter according to your application which will also help you avoid any disturbances. Last but not least, the H7CX-N features a NEMA 4X front or an IP66 front protection. We do have accessories available that can cover the H7CX-N for those applications requiring washdown. Please consult the data sheet. Before we begin programming, one thing I'd like for you to keep in mind that there are 15 parameters which may or may not be needed to be set up before you begin your application. Please review the factory default parameters which are located in the H7CX-N datasheet as you may not need to change them for your application, therefore making your program easier. All right, now that we've gone through the key features of the H7CXN multifunctional counter, it is time now for us to program it. The program which we are going to do today is the total counter application. So uh, first let's check our wiring to make sure that the unit is properly wired uh, from an input perspective and also from a line voltage perspective. After doing so, uh, power up the unit. Once you power up the unit, you'll see that the process value is uh, zero is red and the set value zero is green and then your output light will be on and that's okay that's where we want to be that being said so we need to get into the parameter setup and by doing that we're going to press the mode key first and then the number one key so that takes us into the parameter setup you have a one stage preset which is the factory default which we are not going to do we are actually going to do a, a total and preset counter so we're going to take the number one key and we're going to toggle it until you have the TCNT. So this is the T indicates total. Once you have that set, we will now then press the mode key first and then press the number one key. That brings us back to the initial screen. What we need to do now is program the function modes. By doing that, we're gonna press the mode key and hold it for three seconds. So now you're going to see C and TM, and that's going to give us the count up function. And for this application, that's what we are going to use. We're going to use the C and TM. Uh, this is our input mode. There's five different modes to choose from. So we're going to keep it at the factory default for right now. We're going to press the mode key to the next function, which is the output. And in this case, we're going to go with the factory default of N. And there's 11 modes to choose from here. 
and it, it's always best to determine which mode is, is best for your application, obviously. And by uh, using the H7CX-N datasheet, uh, it will determine uh, which mode is uh, appropriate for your application. So, we are now going to press the MO key once again. You're going to see CNTS. This is the counting speed. Uh, there's two speeds to choose from. There's 30 hertz by pressing the number one key. That will change us over to the five kilohertz. Seeing how we're going to be using a push button for our input, we can use the 30 hertz. So, we're going to press the MO key. And next, you're going to see IFLT, which is for the reset input signal width. Uh, there is two speeds to choose from there, 20 milliseconds. And by pressing the number one key, it'll get us to the one millisecond. One millisecond is uh, used for very high speed applications. Uh, for applications that are not as high speed, uh, we can then keep it at the factory default of 20 milliseconds. So that's what we're going to do today. We are now going to press the MO key for the decimal placement. So if we have an application where we want to have a, uh, a decimal reading, uh, in this situation, uh, you would be able to set the decimal. And this function allows you to determine how many numbers should be placed after the decimal. And what's nice about this, by pressing the number one key, you can then move the decimal to whatever position you need it. So, for our application, well, we're just going to keep it at the factory default, where no decimal will be needed. Next is the prescale, PSCL. Um, what's interesting about this function, it's a way of scaling the input to equal a certain amount of counts on the display. The typical application uh, would be using an encoder needing to scale the display to read a number a feet or, or meters traveled. In this application, once again, since we don't have an encoder, we're just going to keep it with the factory default of a thousand. Next is our input, IMOD. Uh, this function here, this dictates to us which function mode will be needed for the input, MPN or PMP. Uh, if you're using a basic switch or a um, push button or limit switch, uh, you could keep it on the MPN and uh, obviously if you have a PMP input, you would press the number one key and then that will allow you to uh, accept a PMP input into the counter. Seeing how we're using a push button, we're going to keep it at MPN. So next, we're going to press the mode key to advance to the next function. Color. As I mentioned in the key features of the H7CX-N, uh, it features three colors, red, green, and orange, and that can give you a variety of nine different color uh, patterns to choose from, depending on your application. In this application right now, we're, we're just going to keep it red, so then, uh, as you saw in the process value, it's red when it reaches that number, and then when it, turns, when it reaches the number, it will then turn green. So. We are now going to press the mode key and continue on. SL-H sets the value for the upper limit. Uh, this prohibits the set point from greater than the value needed, meaning this is the ceiling of the counting. So if you were to put your preset number in, and as your products come by and are being picked up by the sensor, once it reaches your predetermined number, it will then stop. It will not continue to count. Once again, for our uh, video today, we're just going to keep it at the factory default. Okay, so we're going into key protect mode. As mentioned in our, uh, our key features, the H7CX-N does feature seven modes of key protection. Uh, as mentioned earlier, it's best to keep the data sheet readily available um, because depending on which mode you pick, you could be locking out certain parameters that you may or may not need. So for today's video, we're going to keep it at uh, Key Protect 1. So that being the case, uh, we are now going to then press the mode key and get back to the main uh, display. So 
So now we are back at the main display where we have the process uh, value set zero and the set value set zero. So now we are going to go ahead and we're going to set the set value. And in this case, I'm going to go and set the set value at 25. Okay, so as you see, the output light is still on. So enable for us to get rid of the, or turn off the output light, we need to press the reset signal. And by pressing the reset button, that's going to allow us to turn off the output light. So I'm going to press the, the reset and the output light will now turn off. So we are now ready to uh, count uh, objects as they come down the line. By using my push button, I'm going to push it 25 times. And when it gets to 25, the output light will turn on. And because we're doing a total and preset counter, we now press the mode key. It gives us a total of 25. We press the mode key again. And if we hit the reset key or press the reset key, and we do another 25, the output light came on. And now we're going to press the mode key. As you can see, it is still keeping track of how many counts we have from a total perspective. Even though we've pressed the reset key in the original menu. So if we hit the mode key, or press the mode key, and we zero that out, and we press the mode key again, we still have 50. So there you have it basic setup of the H7CXN multifunction counter. Any questions pertaining to the H7CXN multifunction counter and or any other Omron products, feel free to visit our website at omron247.com or call one of our local Omron distributors in your area 